Board of Supervisors meeting, recorded November 15, 2022. It's 5 o'clock, we'll call the Portage County Board to order. And the clerk will take the roll. We have 23 supervisors present. Uh, Supervisor Morrow is remote and Supervisor Keller is absent. Pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Invocation by Supervisor Rockman. George Washington said, without virtue there can be no liberty. While I have many thoughts on the nature of virtue as it pertains to governance, as elected officials, our place does not rest upon a soapbox, nor does it reside within a sanctuary. The Founding Fathers spoke often of virtue, as do many public figures these days. So let's take a moment to reflect on the term as it was commonly understood during the birth of our great nation. Virtue is not the purest of, not the pursuit of moral purity or the use of belief systems as shields. To be virtuous was to be a servant of the community, to place the well-being of all others above our personal desires. The components of such a lofty aim are many, but can be distilled to into three according to Jefferson, self-sacrifice, participation, and cooperation. May these qualities, so often found in our police officers, firefighters, teachers, judges, EMS personnel, nurses, activists, and soldiers, grace our discourses and decisions. May we strive to emulate this in our actions on this board with robust and selfless representation, as well as honest and open dialogue. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Number two, approval of November 1st, 2022 minutes. Motion by Supervisor Laddick, second by Supervisor Dubeck. Any corrections or changes? All those in favor with aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public notice, members of the public who wish to address the county board on specific agenda items must register their requests at this time with such comments subject to reasonable control of county board chair as set forth in Robert's Rules of Order. We have a list. Yep. Okay. If there's anybody else that would like to speak uh, to get on the list. <laughs> Ready? Confirmation of County Executive's appointment. Appointment of Ann Hubbard to the Commission on Aging and Aging and Disability Resource Center Board for a three-year term expiring April 14th, 2025. Motion by Supervisor Splinter, seconded by Supervisor Jankowski. Discussion? There's no objections. All those in favor with aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Consideration of veto override. Number four, uh, county executive line item veto of resolution 54-2022-2024 amended regarding adoption of the 2023 Portage County budget and property tax levy uh, apportionment for the 2022 tax levy payable in 2023. I'll take a motion. Uh, I need to state the, mo uh, what are we gonna do with this, Dave? <laughs> I've got uh, just raising hands and stuff. It's, I, I need to either uh, affirming because it makes a difference on how we vote. So whether you're going to uh, motion in favor of it or to vote it down. Motion to override this bad boy. Motion to override. Seconded by, uh, uh, I can't see, is that Mr. Olson? 
Supervisor Olson. <laughs> all right. Uh, and we have public input on these. All these are number four. Yep. Okay. Uh, first step is, I apologize for pronunciation, Tarian O'Carroll. And to remind everybody that we have three minutes. Uh, we have we, that'll change. We have three minutes to speak, and when uh, if somebody else has already said something that you agree with, just uh, please state that you agree with it. And we ask that nobody uh, direct the comments to the chair, and that nobody uh, directs uh, comments or it gets uh, loud or or confrontational, or I may stop you. But so, thank you, sir. Go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. no. A little louder. Okay, uh, better. Um, I would just like to kind of bring the emotion or try to bring the emotion out of this. Uh, if we could. Oh, Margaret, I can't hear you. If we could. Over replace, by my chair. Turn it down a little bit. Go ahead. If we could replace the word nitrate, it's kind of combative or whatever you want to say with, with PFAS or any kind of contamination. Uh, my well is contaminated and I'm, I'm seeking to find out if there is clean water down there so that I, if I have to drink, drill a new well, uh, I don't want to put another straw in the same coffee pot uh, and waste my money and time or just anyone's money and time. So. Uh, I just would like to simplify it and, you know, this isn't uh, the type of thing that should really be up for too much discussion. In my view, it's a health concern and I've been asking for a couple of years now for someone to address the situation. Um, so hopefully we can come through this as a community and uh, remain whole. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Anderson. Hello, everybody. Um, the veto of this monitoring plan was a shock to Nelsonville residents. Uh, first, I want to thank the 13 people who voted for funding the monitoring plan. Um, I really dislike speaking publicly, I wrote down some comments and so I hope you'll bear with me. Um, there's there's so much to talk about, but so I just picked one point that I would want to uh, speak to. We often hear the argument that this is an issue between personal property rights and safe drinking water. We're told to take care of our own wells, which for clarity's sake are not the problem with contamination in the village. We are told by the executive, quote, we are concerned that a person's property rights are not taken away. This is where we have the concern, and it is a big concern. An individual's rights to appropriate water, whatever appropriate water is, and an individual's rights to use their property as they see fit. This is where an understanding of shared resources needs to come in. It's referred to as a tragedy of a shared resource based on the idea behind the tragedy of the commons. The analogy that was given in the 60s was when ranchers graze their animals on a common field. When the field is not over capacity, ranchers may graze their animals with few limitations. However, the rational rancher will seek to add livestock, thereby increasing profits. Thinking logically, but not collectively, the benefits of adding animals adhere to the rat rancher alone while the costs are shared. The tragedy is that ultimately no rancher will be able to graze the field due to overconsumption. In our case, the shared resource is the groundwater that feeds our wells, and the cost is that we cannot drink our water. Our health cannot be allowed to suffer the consequences of the contamination of this shared resource. It is commonly recognized that one of the primary roles of government is to define and manage shared resources. This issue before you today may seem like a recent concern and Perhaps um, you're seeing too much of a bunch of annoying people from Nelsonville, but we've been dealing with this for more than four years. If some people have their way, this funding may not come before you again for consideration. This is your chance to recognize your responsibility, your mandate, and guarantee that this essential monitoring is funded. 
Thank you. Tor Anderson. Hi, thanks for hearing my comments tonight. The question before you today about funding the Nelsonville monitoring wells is really important because these monitoring wells will tell residents where safe drinking water exists in the aquifer beneath the village. We will basically have a 3D picture of the nitrate plume or plumes moving through the village's groundwater. A very common argument we hear is just dig deeper wells. There are reasons that deeper wells don't lead to a solution. Digging deeper doesn't always mean safer drinking water. For example, in Nelsonville, we have a well that is about 60 feet below the water table that has high nitrates, while we have one around 30 feet below the water table that does not. Also, a Stockton bar was referenced during the recent Land and Water Conservation Committee meeting. It was discussed that they had high nitrates years ago, dug deeper, and within about five years had higher nitrates than previously. They even dug another well and still are well above the limit. The hydrology of the village will only be known through the data we get from this monitoring. We've been told that the church's well driller hit clay at about 100 feet, the clay lasted about 20 feet, and they found safe water at 130 feet. Then we've also been told that a well which was dug about a block downgrading from the church didn't hit that clay layer. A clay layer can't be counted on to prevent contamination due to the vari variability of the hydrology. Trying to piece together what we can from these drilling reports will not tell us where safe and drink drinking water is and how long it might stay that way. The county is mandated in state code to reverse contamination and protect the waters of the state. This isn't optional. This isn't a, su a suggestion. It's the law. There is no exception written into the law for being just a small village or for certain sources of the contamination the county has or for certain sources of the contamination the county hasn't dealt with this problem for the decades since the 1990s when nitrates became a known problem gcac has been around for decades and we have countless hours going into an effort that hasn't effectively addressed the contamination of our wells there are industry forces at work to ensure these wells never go in now is the time to provide these this funding. It may not come before you again if the Finance Committee doesn't grant ARPA funds. If they do grant the funds, the budget won't be affected at all. There's no cost to you in guaranteeing that this contamination will finally be addressed by the village of Nelsonville if the ARPA funds come through. Please prioritize the residents' health. You are in a position today to do that. Thank you. <clears throat> Patty Dreyer. This past week, we honored veterans on Veterans Day. One picture my family shared on social media was this one, the one of my husband, Tom, as a young lieutenant, and he was in a small medical detachment, and the United States Army um, sent them to Bolivia to install a well so that the community, the village, in that Matakan, uh, that, uh, that area, could have fresh drinking water. Our US Army sent military members to a foreign country to do this. And I find it so ironic that I stand here tonight with an understanding about a line item veto for monitoring wells for many families' benefit in the village of Nelsonville. I understand that there uh, is a possible other source for funding for the future um, of this project, but we need to secure the future now in this budget because clean drinking water for our residents in this county in Nelsonville is a need now. And yes, this might be a precedent setting project as the county executive says in his communications, but what's wrong with setting a precedent that says clean drinking water for our citizens in Portage County matters to our county board, to our county leadership, to our elected leaders. 
What's wrong with a precedent that says that we know we have a water quality problem in our county, aren't we fourth worst in the entire state of Wisconsin? And we're working toward finding solutions together because that's how we protect the future of our county, the future of our property values, our citizens' health and well-being. The only way the anti-farmer, anti-grower sentiment changes is if we work together to put it behind us intentionally, if you take action to help make that happen as well. It's action we're talking about. And in this case, it means that you don't put it off on a finance committee, a subset of this body, that th instead this body says, we want to stand for helping to find solutions together. The new Wisconsin Potato Vegetable Grower Association Education Center is nearly um, completed, and they want nearly a million dollars from our county for it. And I can imagine a model where we work together starting rightly tonight, where this is a real opportunity not to share propaganda about how great it is to grow potatoes and corn in sandy soils where additional nitrate problems come from, but instead to say we recognize we affect the groundwater, but we are working together for solutions, and we want to share those stories with you when you come in the doors at this new center. This is about giving a damn about the citizens in Nelsonville, but it's Nelsonville today and it'll be another community tomorrow. Water quality issues aren't going away and without your override, it's only going to get worse. On capital funds such as a nursing home or library, some people never use those services. Just like some people will not be getting the direct benefit of the monitoring wells in Nelsonville. However, Patty. it serves the good of the whole and that's what this is all about a humanitarian mission, and I urge you to step up into it. Thank you. Dave Mangin. Well, that's a tough one to follow. <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Dave Mangan. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak here tonight. Um, this is a contentious issue, and I'll make some of the same points that you've already heard, but they're worth repeating. These things really do matter. <clears throat> they matter to me. Um, I'm a resident of Nelsonville. My kids live in Nelsonville. My daughter just turned eight uh, three days ago. I have a 10-year-old son, and our nitrates have been at about 18 parts per million for the last four years or so. In 2018, we had a source test done, and there were tracers from uh, agricultural byproducts found in our well, found in our water. And there were four different uh, compounds that were found, and none of them could be uh, related back to any like septic systems or any human causes or anything like that. So we know that the, the problem is agricultural. So now, uh, going through the process of trying to apply for the state grant to uh, get a new well. Well, for one thing, it's tough to get well drillers to call back right now, so that's why the DNR hasn't heard from me yet. But also, uh, we, we really need to know how deep to drill the new well in order to find the new water, as has been demonstrated in some of the previous, by some of the previous speakers. Now, in the last couple of months, the LWCC, certain members of the w, LWCC, Land and Water Conservation Commission, part of, uh, by members of the county board here, have been pursuing another round of source testing in Nelsonville. I fear that they will try to promote this testing at a cost of about $10,000 as a substitute for the monitoring well plan that's in question today. We need the monitoring wells at different depths and at strategic locations in order to get a 3D view of the aquifer under Nelsonville. I need it in order to locate clean water for a new well, for me, for my family. If members of the LWCC are successful in promoting their new round of testing as a replacement for the monitoring wells, then the ARPA funds are called into question for this project. I need these wells for the health of my family. The county is obligated to protect public health. There is no negative precedent to be set here except to demonstrate a lack <coughs> of support for the well-being of residents. Please, just give me and my family peace of mind that we're going to get these wells. It's not that hard. Thank you. 
Dave Iden. Nope. He says no. Okay. Keith Kudrowski. Keith Kudrowski. Stephen's point. So I guess I don't understand the whole ARPA thing. So I do feel for these people, but if there's federal money coming, I'm not sure why we're stepping forward. Let's say I'm kind of into this game a little late. I just heard about it. Someone brought up to me Sunday and asked me to come here. And now I listen to these people. So I'm a little more confused about the issue. But if there's federal money supposedly we're going to get, I'd say, why are we attaching it to the budget this year as opposed to what drives this ARPA thing would be one of my questions. I think it sounds like the gentleman said depends on this testing. So I, I just feel like it's a special budget item. It's like in Stevens Point, they have a water treatment plant they all share. I don't, I know Nelsonville's a little more sparsely populated, but to give money to each individual landowner, I get it's what they need maybe, but is it justified? Is it, should they be a centralized, can they be a centralized water source? So again, I, I appreciate the, the veto just to bring it to discussion so I can hear more about it, if nothing else. So thank you. Kyle Gordon. <clears throat> Hello. Um, pretty busy day at work. I didn't have much time to write anything down, but I'm going to give you my three minutes. Can you speak um, up? Can you speak up or get a little close to the mic, please? <clears throat> there you go. Thank when, you. Uh, when you talk about nitrates in Portage County, we're way past that we have nitrates. We've been way past it for 40 years. The only way to prevent nitrates is to stop putting so many in the ground and to come up with a mass budgeting system. We know what the plants use. We know we have <clears throat> porous soil. <clears throat> if you really want to put in monitoring wells in this village, you have our support. When I talked last time, I think nobody heard what I was saying. It's too slow. Supervisor Slevich commented, they want water now. You're talking about gathering information for four to five years. We have to stop spending 240000 You can make an argument. You could drill them all a new well. Look, our farm, realistically, we're starting to enter into exit strategies. There's no possible way that our farm can hold up to this kind of activism. If I listen to what you guys have been told, I would probably think the same way you do. There hasn't even been a well drilled in 20 years. It's consistently high in nitrates in the town. I don't know where you would drill to not find clean water. Drill shallow next to where there's septics, I suppose. I'm sorry to be cynical, but I've spent my entire career <clears throat> in conservation, and it's entirely possible that the village is better off because of the way we farm. If it was surrounded by potatoes, corn, or a subdivision, it would be worse. And when we leave, because we can't hold up to this kind of pressure. People, it's our, we're done. Can't hold up to this. But I'm just begging you to do your due diligence and research what you're really hearing, what's really going on here. Please, think about it. Think about what you're doing. <clears throat> there's, there's ways to get clean water. I've been offered ROs and wells. I get it. I get that it's a Band-Aid. But if I'm going to get hurt, put a, I'm hoping I have something I can put a Band-Aid on and then fix the big problem. Nitrates take 20, 30, 40 years to turn around. There's research in some of these potato areas where the nitrates are lower, shallower, and higher, deeper. The modern farming practices are working. This takes time. Simply attacking a farm and ignoring a village that has five houses and a septic issue is it, it, it's irresponsible and it's reckless. If you want to vote that way, that's fine. But do your due diligence. That money is way better spent to put less nitrates in the ground than it is to put in prosecution wells 
that are simply going to take five years and tell you what happened a long time ago. They've done a lot of work in the village. They've already got a great database. Let's move forward instead of just moving backwards. Is there anybody else that didn't have an opportunity to sign up that would like to speak? No? Okay. And I will turn it to the board. Anybody that would like to speak from the board, Mr. Olson. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chair. I urge the county supervisors to override the county executive's line item <laughs> veto on the budget amendment for the Nelsonville monitoring wells. Whether it's the issue of clean water or finding clean water through the monitoring wells, it's water all the same, a fundamental right for all people. The opportunity is here to secure funding for a project that will help Portage County. If you believe that the issue of safe drinking water is unimportant, take a drive through Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana and talk with residents about their polluted waterways and groundwater, because that is where Wisconsin is headed if we don't address this issue. I find it challenging to vote in favor of using state and federal rescue funds for the Food and Farm Exploration Center, a marketing center, if we can't even secure safe drinking water for all Portage County. The underlying problem here in Portage County is the same across the state of Wisconsin and across the United States. We have been treating other people as things and not people. My brother Jesse has a simple but wise saying, if you're going to plant cabbage, you're going to get cabbage. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else? Supervisor Splinter. At the last meeting, I made a point that the, these ARPA funds, there are funds now. We're not subject to anybody in Washington approving something or another. And I just, I confirmed when I got here, well, Senator Josie and, and uh, Supervisor Dodge, that the, S, the, the well project is going to be discussed in two weeks on November 28th. The Land and Water Committee did a, I thought we did a thorough job of really trying to analyze a lot of things over the summer. We all unanimously agreed that this well project is a valid project. We all agreed that there's a nitrate problem. So no one's disagreeing with that. And uh, I, just, I just think I'd rather have the federal funds pay for this than take it out of the hides of our local taxpayers. That's all I have, thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Supervisor Laddick. I, uh, I wholeheartedly agree that we need to put those monitoring wells in, but <clears throat> like uh, Supervisor Splinter had said, uh, the Finance Committee is meeting to uh, review all the applications on November 28th, which is only two weeks. And, you know, actually, this project was approved and the funding was started. And we need to let the process work out to see if the, if the state and local physical recovery funds can be used. And I think it, it fits the classification. It, meet, it checks all the boxes. Uh, at that time, if they if we don't decide to fund it through that funding source, then we need to go back and take a look at getting funding somewhere else. But in my heart, I just think that it's a no-brainer for those funds to be used for this project. And I, I hate to think that all the other applications we had for this funding, if everybody else thought that their project was more important and had a rate our capital project fund to move their project forward. I just don't agree with that. I think we should let our, our grant process play out. And two weeks ago when we were here, um, or a week ago, whenever it was, I had checked, and there are a lot of private, for these wells going on private property. They don't even have landowner agreements to install these wells yet the last time I checked. Now, I didn't check today, but I doubt if they've been signed yet. Um, most of the contractors can't get here till sometime midwinter. I don't understand why waiting two more weeks that we can get our grant applications through finance and then get this approved with, uh, with the, uh, the ARPA funds. Thank you. 
Supervisor Keller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, just want to make one point clear here. The line item veto does not have anything to do with saying that this project will not go forward. All right? The project is planned. The project is strategically paid for. It was vetoed because it's not necessary in the budget. We will have plenty of time, should something unforeseen come up, to create a hurdle for this project to be done, I can confidently tell you, you would get, if not total, very near total support from this board. And we would come up with the money at that time. So it's time to stop doing what isn't necessary. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Supervisor Dodge. <laughs> I would just say as a member of finance, I'm in agreement with the county executive. I do not believe that this funding should come out of capital projects for the county. In a conversation I had with you the other day, I mentioned that um, the Rochelle Fire District has applied for grants for a fire engine for many years to no avail. So what's to stop me from coming to this board for an amendment for a fire truck for the village of Rochelle, the town of Sharon, and the town of Alban. That serves far more people than the folks in Nelsonville. So that's just an, ex you know, an explanation of what could happen and it's pretty far-fetched. I talked with um, Jenny Josie before the meeting. She has confirmed that the Finance Committee will be meeting on the 28th to review applications. This application is on the table for review that day. And I do believe that um, if it's approved by finance committee, and I'm hearing a lot of support for the project, so I don't believe that it's an issue. But my understanding is it could be on the agenda for December's county board meeting. And I guess I'd like some confirmation of that. Yeah. No. 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 Hello. Hello. Go up to the front one else. <laughs> it's just a, Somewhere you'll find it. <laughs> just holler. It's just a test bike, apparently. Um, so yes. Yeah, so um, through conversations um, earlier today, I talked with Chair Rakowski. And in terms of the process, um, the applications, pending applications will be reviewed. Um, they'll also be shared with the county executive for recommendation. They will go to finance to be evaluated and scored. And then based on that, um, since this is our first run through the process, this is new to us, we haven't done this before, um, we would take a resolution for those that were approved by finance committee to this body to do the budget amendment for the state and local fiscal recovery funds. So they come in the form of a budget amendment like we do most months and we would appropriate the money this way based on the applications that were um, evaluated by finance for approval. Any questions on the process? Supervisor Oki. Supervis Supervisor Oki. So given the processes for finance to review the requests that came in on time that are eligible to be reviewed, what, what but you said it'll come to finance to be scored. Yep, so there's an evaluation tool based on the questions that were um, on the application. There's a, a scoring tool that was developed that would score a series of points and you have to be over a certain set of points to be awarded funding, at least in the first round. Um, and then those that met that criteria would be forwarded on for a budget amendment to allocate the state and local fiscal recovery funds, which we have the funds. It would just be simply appropriating those dollars towards that project so that they could be spent. And so within the process, just to follow up to that, 
So, um, and I don't know, you know, the, I don't know the number of requests that you have, and I don't know if it exceeds the dollar amount that exists. Um, so would, would projects perhaps be considered for a partial funding? Let's it, say. Yes, if, if the, if the uh, finance committee um, would evaluate the request, they could, you know, maybe if a project uh, had an ability to receive other funds from elsewhere, they might say, um, you know, we'll award X number of dollars if you do, you know, the other half or the other 25% or something of that nature, they could do that. Okay. Has yep. this committee had experience in this process? Um, this is new to us. We've not had award dollars like this before. We looked at other models like other counties were using as our, our model. We spent most of the summer working on it um, to put something together. Um, it's our first run at it. You know, we haven't done it before, but we had to start somewhere. So we came up with a, a tool and a method and a scoring uh, document, which have all been in the finance committee meetings and packets um, based on kind of the, the marching resolution that we got that we were going to kind of handle this because we didn't have anything else in place to do with it. So we put it together. So Jen, can you, uh, there was an email that went out uh, this afternoon at about 4.15 today, and some of you may have been in route because of the timeliness of it. So if you could just highlight or touch on that for a second as well so everybody has that information. So our office has been getting numerous requests for um, various components of information. Um, so in... In the email, we shared kind of just a process that I kind of described, probably more at a higher level than I just talked about. Um, but we also did share that um, the department has received 12 requests. Um, the total dollar value of those requests is just over $3.7 million. Um, we have, I believe, over $7 million left to be allocated. I know there's some underspending as well in our first round of applications or not applications, the first round of awards that we gave because we've been getting reports of underspending. Um, so it does indicate in here the meeting is the no on November 28th. Um, and um, that's kind of what we're going to share for now because the applications still have to be reviewed um, to make sure that those applications meet the criteria, not only of the requirements of state and local fiscal recovery funds, but also that they met the criteria for our submission requirements, you know, that they were on time, that they put in the information that was required um, before we proceed as well. Thank you. Supervisor Laddick. One question for Director Josie. On the uh, grant application uh, for the funds request, there is a spot on the second page and it asks the question, are there other funding opportunities or matching funds available, available for the project? So if we have this identified as out of the capital project, how does it affect the scoring? I think that's, you know, as a committee, when you score that, if there's other opportunities for funding, it's, um, you could score it lower because there's other avenues or other resources, um, you know, rather than using state and local fiscal recovery funds. I mean, everything is kind of on a, uh, a range of numbers. Um, I would say similar to kind of how we do procurements and RFPs. So, um, as long as you're the scorer and you're scoring consistently and applying the same mentality when you're answering that question, um, that's what we look for when we score is consistent scoring. So that if I always score um, a certain criteria a certain way, that I would just be consistent in my process. And I'm not scoring. I'm just using that as an example. So, so in that example, I'm thinking that, you know, the, the project has come from land and water with approval. And if we're trying to figure out where it's going to be paid for and you look for an alternative source, that means that you will fund it from an alternative source. It's not a question of whether you will or won't. It's just where it's going to be paid for from. So that's my interpretation. Supervisor Rakowski. Director Josie, you can also mention to us that Part of the scoring is if it's a county program. Correct. 
you qualify for points for that as well. Correct. There is a, on one of the questions that if it is a county, um, a, a county department or a county request that it, it did get um, scored a bit higher than if it came from an outside source. Uh, Supervisor Matt Jakowski. Because of the unorthodox way that the uh, motion was made, can you explain what a yes vote means? We'll get to that. No vote means, and I'd like to call the question. <clears throat> yep, we'll get to that. John, did you want to speak to? I'm going to give the executive an opportunity to speak as well. Thank you, County Chair, County Board Supervisors, Department Heads, ladies and gentlemen uh, attending. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Joan, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Um, one of the biggest responsibilities of the county executive is to administer the budget appropriately. I take that job seriously. The county's financial department, in my estimation, has done an outstanding job in the past, and I hope to continue that tradition and that excellence. When it comes to the budget this year, there really wasn't a whole lot uh, and complicated to really get done. Uh, with the 1.65% in net new construction, it basically added about $422,000 of the budget. The department heads came in basically and uh, just basically renewed the previous budgets, um, uh, what they had done previously. There's very little minor, minor changes done. Basically, we added a sheriff's communications officer. We did some minor changes to the DA's uh, department. Um, we added the election equipment to the capital improvement fo fund. Um, that was really about it. Um, there's not a whole lot that really took place on the budget because it's, because there's a, such a limited money coming in and the, and, and <coughs> the finances are really tight. Capital improvements are to be used for capital in infrastructure that benefits the people of Portage County. Example, highway projects, election equipment, things that are used by all the people of, of, of the county, or they can be used by a single group. For example, when you uh, do improvements to the um, uh, ADRC, when they, they specifically improve the environment for the elderly, or when you put a playground equipment on a parks, it allows all the children to um, uh, use that playground equipment. Monitoring wells are not a capital improvement to me. They are a research project. The county has not and does not fund to remediate water quality for any other municipalities or groups. Not Stevens Point, not Plover, not Amherst, not Junction City. Why should we start now and open up the Pandora's box of having others request that we do the same, especially since we have opportunity through another source of funding that, puts the, uh, that fits those requirements. If we open up that avenue for funding, water remediation products throughout the county, the county potentially opens up countless of others, municipalities, groups, individuals requesting those funds also. I do not believe we want to set that precedent and we would be financially unwise for the county to do so. As many of you know, there has been an application to use state and local fiscal recovery funds for those monitoring wells. That request fits into these categories very, very well and, funds, and, and those funds can be used for that purpose. To make a request a second time for funds for the same project is an unorthodox manner and bad financial uh, is, is, is bad for bad for the government finances. It is redundant coming from the wrong fund. I am confident that they will be funded through the state and local fiscal recovery funds. Also, with the possibility of building two building projects this year with the health care center and the jail and the court system, the county has the possibility of taking its capital improvement budget to levels that it has never seen before. We want to keep that budget as low as possible right now in anticipation of what might happen. I've talked with the finance department. I've talked with some finance committee members. Um, we actually wanted to put the request for these funds on an earlier agenda, but that just does not fit the schedule and also would be inappropriate for the other applicants. Um, I'm not arguing that we should um, not put the monitoring wells in. I'm in disagreement about the method in which you are trying to attain those funds. We are going around the process that is in place to protect financing and having checks and balances in place for the county. I'll take any questions. Thank you, sir. Dave, you're up. <laughs> 
<clears throat> to help prepare for to tonight, um, and based on the assumption that some sort of a motion would be made, um, I prepared um, some wording to help explain and to address Supervisor Matchikowski's question. First of all, um, I'd indicate that Supervisor Moresi's motion, and no offense to Supervisor Moresi, but it's, uh, it's uh, the bones. And what I've done is we'll put a little meat on the bones in terms of the wording of the motion. So um, the wording I came up with for the motion to override is, and I think it fairly characterizes what it is that we're doing. It's a motion to override the county executive's veto of Supervisor Weaver's amendment to Resolution 54-2022-2024 to add $245,135 to the Capital Project Fund for funding the Planning and Zoning Department's Groundwater Monitoring Wells Project in the Village of Nelsonville. So that's the motion, as stated, to override the veto. Then I came up with yes and no explanation statements. A yes vote on the motion means that the county executive's veto is overridden, resulting in the approval and reinstatement of Supervisor Weaver's amendment to Resolution 54-2022-2024 to add $245,135 to the Capital Project Fund for funding the Planning and Zoning Department's Groundwater Monitoring Wells Project in the Village of Nelsonville. Conversely, a no vote on the motion to override the veto means that the county executive's veto is upheld, resulting in the ongoing disapproval and rejection of Supervisor Weaver's amendment to Resolution 54-2022-2024 to add the $245,135 to the Capital Project Fund for the funding of the PNZ Department's Groundwater Monitoring Wells Project in the Village of Nelsonville. So, Supervisor Weaver. If I may, I'd like to... Use the mic, please. <laughs> I'd like to uh, respond to a few things that our county executive has said this evening. Um, we're obviously here in the context of a veto being exercised, which is seeking to undo what a majority of this board has already agreed to do. Um, first of all, that was a majority when the amendment passed. And then, of course, we had unanimous approval of the budget itself. So I think that is significant context to point out. I've heard a couple of bases in support of the veto, which I want to address. Um, and, and I think I've heard two. Um, first of all, is the argument that the capital projects fund is not the right place for the funding. I think what's telling is that the county executive is disregarding what has already been stated by our finance director, who in fact indicated that the capital projects fund was the best fit for this funding. I think that director Josie's views probably should hold much more than the county executives in this particular situation. And that is not intended to be any disrespect for the county executive. It's just that I think Director Josie would have a far better understanding of that. Second of all, there's been a argument made that somehow funding these wells through the capital projects fund isn't appropriate because it wouldn't be a benefit to the whole county. Again, we've heard now on a few occasions from our water quality specialist that it is intended to benefit the whole county. And in fact, she sees 
what's going on in Nelsonville as a test case so that we as a county can move forward to grapple with the groundwater contamination that we have as a county. So again, that one doesn't seem to hold water either. Um, I heard tonight that it's unorthodox because there is a SLRP application pending, but yet now funding is being sought through the budget process. In fact, that's precisely what is happening with the election machines. The only difference is that the funding for those didn't require an amendment because they were already baked into the budget, yet they also have a SLRP fund, uh, excuse me, SLRP application, which is pending. So this is not unorthodox. Similarly, I heard the language that it was going around the process. Again, I don't know what that means because we as supervisors were told that we had the right to propose a budget amendment and we were reminded of that right. I simply exercised the right and I worked directly with Director Josie in a very open and transparent way. So I don't see how it went around the process at all. If what the concern is, is that we don't want supervisors to be making budget amendments, then I think that is a totally different issue and if that is something that we want to address, then I think it's something that should be put on an agenda. But at, at this time, we do have that right. I guess lastly, I would just like to point out that this idea that it, it's got to benefit the whole county, again, I think that it does, but I don't see that standard baked into our ordinance. If you look at chapter 3.8.2, it clearly lays out the standards and requirements for what an appropriate capital project would be. One of those is the purchase of major equipment that you know exceeds $25,000 and has a relatively long period of usefulness. Again, this squares folly, it, it's, it falls squarely within that. So I think we need to be very careful about not buying into standards that we are grafting on top of our ordinance to try and achieve a different result. Again, this will simply give the funding as part of the budget process and if it so happens that the ARPRA application is granted, then it'll divert to that. Thank you. All right. Does everybody understand how, how and which way they need to vote in order to make their vote count? I want to make sure that's very clear <laughs> because it is an unusual circumstances with the, with the veto override, myself and Corp Council and staff have had discussion about this this afternoon uh, to make sure that that there is clarity in this uh, in this vote process. Supervisor Matchikowski. Mr. Chair, does this vote require a super majority? And if so, what is that super majority? Super majority, yes, it does, and it's two thirds. Two thirds in this case, because of the way the motion was made, there would need to be two thirds yeses, and those yeses that would uh, the number is seventeen that it would have to reach. If there is a simple majority one way or another, uh, it has to meet it by 17 to make sure that it, it actually overrides. Otherwise, the veto that the executive has brought forward stands. Okay. Supervisor Moresi. I with all due respect, Supervisor, or, uh, Attorney Ray, I do like my um, forward answer uh, much better. I think it's better for us common folk down here. Um, so. If we vote yes, it's to override, correct? And if we vote no, it's to maintain. And if you're okay, Dave, detail. Dave, if so, if you vote yes, you are are in favor of Mr. Weaver. And if you vote no, and I'm 
I'm simplifying this to the greatest oh, extent, appropriate. is to agree w with the county executive. That makes it very Does that black and white. Makes sense. That that follows. Yes. In this particular order that you made the motion, because in some cases this thing is brought forward in the negative, which creates problems with what a yes means and a no means. And I don't want to get into that because I will complicate it for people. I think that's the simplest explanation for people to understand this, is that a yes means you're in favor of Mr. Weaver, and a no means you're in favor of the county exec. Supervisor Oki. Mm -hmm. Just for clarification, I think I would request that the um, that it's focused on a person, Weaver. It's focused on a project. So if we're looking to override the veto, it's not on a person. It's on the project that we're looking to go forward with. So I would ask that that be yeah, corrected. Good point. Uh, and <laughs> I, in most cases, I would agree, but this is a very unique, and I want to make sure everybody is very clear. Uh, which way they need to vote or they get it right because I think when the votes show up and whether it passes or fails I'm going to have a lot of people say that I meant to vote the other way so I want to try and make sure that everybody understands this to the best that they can all right and we can vote <clears throat> <laughs> so, Supervisor Oki, it didn't take. Oh, I'm sorry. And Supervisor Morrow? Nay. Motion fails, 13-12. All right. Resolution on ordinances, number five, Town of Stockton, comprehensive plan amendment and Portage County zoning ordinance map amendment, wise broad property. This is resolution number 60-2022-2024 submitted by the Planning and Zoning Committee. This resolution approves the comprehensive plan amendment and Portage County zoning ordinance map amendment for the wise bot property in the town of Stockton. Motion by Supervisor Barry Jakowski, seconded by Supervisor Dodge. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, vote yes and oppose no. Supervisor Morrow? Aye. Motion carries 24 to 1. Number six, authorization for contract between Portage County and the Board of Regents of the University of Wisconsin Systems for January 1, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. This is resolution number 61-2022-2024 submitted by the Agricultural and Extension Education Committee. This resolution authorizes a contract between Portage County and the Board of Regents of the UW system for January 1, 2023 through 12-31-2023. Motion by Supervisor Matt Joukowsky, seconded by Supervisor Barry Joukowsky. Discussion. It's a lot easier when both of you are on the motion. I don't get them mixed up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> if there's no other discussion, all those in favor vote yes and oppose no. Supervisor Morrow? You're muted. Sorry, I. Motion carries 25-0. Number seven, approving and authorizing QBE as the stop loss provider for the Portage County Health Insurance Plan for 2023. 
This is resolution number 62-2024-20, excuse me, 2022-2024 submitted by the HR committee. This resolution approves and authorizes a renewal with QBE as the stop loss provider for the Portage County Health Insurance Plan for 2023. Motion by Supervisor Rakowski, seconded by Supervisor Dubeck. Discussion. All those in favor, vote yes and oppose no. <clears throat> Supervisor Morrow? Aye. <coughs> Motion carry 25 0. Number eight, authorizing a contract with Election System and Software LLC for election support service from January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, uh, 2023. This is resolution number 63-2022-2024 submitted by the Exec Ops Committee. This resolution authorizes a contract with Election System and Software LLC for election support services from January 1, 2023 through December 31, 2023. Motion by Supervisor Pataki, seconded by Supervisor Jankowski. Uh, I have someone from the public, Mr. Iden, wanted to speak on this issue or registered to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Dave Biden, City of Stevens Point here. I guess I just have some questions in regarding to uh, what this entails. And um, uh, curious as the direction we're going with some of our voting equipment, uh, given the fact that there's been questions of questionable votes and fraud throughout the country, not to mention potentially here, if there's been any any opportunities to look at potentially changing our voting system within the county. Thank you. So I'll ask the uh, county clerk if she could give you a quick explanation. So there are three approved election providers in the state of Wisconsin, election systems and software, Dominion and Electionware are the three approved companies. Um, two predecessors before me, uh, County Clerk Shirley Simonis, signed on with them back in the early 2000s, so we have not changed um, providers, and I don't think it's the intent to really ever do that because that would be a, a really harsh financial hit for municipalities who have already bought a lot of the equipment that's used countywide. Um, as far as the services provided by ESNS, they do all of our ballot programming, so we tell them uh, which races need to end up on which ballot and then which candidates need to be on that ballot. Uh, they also do a lot of the programming um, for those who are impaired with hearing, so they create that um, audio log, I guess you could say, so people can hear what the candidates' names are when they use that universal voting equipment. Um, and then they also program uh, the tabulators so that they are tabulating accurately. So do, how long, do you know how many years we've used election systems and software? Roughly, it's... <laughs> I believe it's since the early 2000s because that's when we first brought in the first tabulator. So there's really no change. We're just we're just have we got a contract that we have to go through. So we're just renewing this at this point. Okay. And typically in years past, it's been a three-year contract, but due to paper uh, costs, they're looking to switch to a one-year contract because of the fluctuations of the market. They don't want to go out that far because they don't know what it's going to cost them in the future. So. Thank you. I appreciate your insight. Yep. You're welcome. Nope. Your your questions have been answered, Supervisor Marassi. All right, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor, vote yes and oppose no. Supervisor Morrow? Aye. Motion carried 25 0. Number nine, approving and authorizing intergovernmental agreements between Portage County and municipalities regarding new voting equipment. 
This is resolution number 64-2022-2024 submitted by the Executive Operations Committee. This resolution approves and authorizes two intergovernmental agreements between Portage County and municipalities regarding new voting equipment. Motion by Supervisor Laddick, seconded by Supervisor Pataki. Discussion. <clears throat> Supervisor Barry Jakowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just like to say that I've had the opportunity in the last couple of weeks to uh, talk with several of the municipal clerks in my district and they would like to thank uh, our county clerk, Ms. Davis, for the hard work that she's done to help get this through. They, they're very confident that those new voting machines will make their job much, much easier. And she, they passed along that if I would thank our county clerk for her work in that. Thank you. So I would echo that and compare us to the state of Arizona <laughs> and uh, the way uh, our older system ran and the way our new system hopefully will run. Uh, we will be um, uh, much smoother and uh, I believe uh, a much more, um, many more ballots for the simple reason of the uh, uh, Mid, not the midterms, uh, the one where you have to vote. Partisan primaries. Partisan primaries. So many people thought that they were uh, voting and really didn't realize when you crossed over party lines that those, <coughs> those don't necessarily work and this machine will, will help to alleviate some of that when the people come down there. So uh, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor vote yes and oppose no. Done. Supervisor Morrill? Aye. Motion passed 25 0. Number 10, authorizing liability coverage through Wisconsin County's Mutual Insurance Corporation for 2023. This is resolution number 65-2022-2024 submitted by the Finance Committee. This resolution approves the renewal of liability coverage with Wisconsin County Mutual Insurance for 2022. Motion by Supervisor uh, Rakowski, seconded by Supervisor Rockman. Discussion? All those in favor, vote yes and oppose no. Supervisor Morrow? Aye. <laughs> Motion carried 25-0. Number 11, authorizing property insurance coverage for 2023. This is resolution number 66-2022-2024 submitted by the Finance Committee. This resolution approves the renewal of property insurance coverage with Wisconsin County Mutual Insurance Corporation for 2023. Motion by Supervisor Dodge, second. By Supervisor Soslevich. Discussion. All those in favor, vote yes and oppose no. <clears throat> Barry. Supervisor Morrow. Aye. Motion carried 25-0. Number 12, establishing a fund balance classifications as required by Gadsby. Statement number 54, fund balance reporting and governmental type or fund type definitions. This is resolution number 67-2022-2024 submitted by the Finance Committee. This resolution establishes fund balance fund balance classifications as required by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statement Number 54, fund balance reporting and governmental fund type definitions for the county's financial statements ending in December 31st, 2022. <laughs> Credit Jen for making these long. <laughs> Motion by Supervisor Laddick, I need a second. Seconded by Supervisor Soik. <laughs> Discussion. She must have been hanging out with, with um, Attorney <laughs> Ray that day. All those in favor, vote yes and oppose no. Sorry, just a minute. There you go. Okay. 
as a tip when you guys push her and then look to make sure up on the board that it, it took. So, uh, to Supervisor Dodge. Supervisor Morrow. Aye. Motion carry 25 0. Take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Supervisor Barry Joukowsky, seconded by Supervisor Laddick. All in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.